Hey everybody, it's David. <laughs> hey, welcome back, welcome back. Anybody new, welcome, welcome. <laughs> um, I'm glad you're here. And so today we're gonna be doing a little bit of something different because we're doing um, a very dark scene, I guess, in a way, but it is a sunset. So um, I did this afternoon, I'm gonna probably do the exact same way because I didn't do any mistakes, I don't think. <laughs> so we're all, we're all good today. And today um, we have a, uh, for our beer, it's not a beer, it's going to be a vodka, co a vodka co cocktail. Boy, I say that three times fast. And this is a Carbless, Carbless, Craft Vodka Cocktail, Peach. So we'll see. <laughs> Something different, like I said. I'm not just doing beers because I ran out of a lot of the beers. <laughs> so, so we'll see. I ran out of a place to actually get the beers and um, buy them by can, by single cans. And a lot of times I don't want to buy a six pack of something. I don't know what it is. <laughs> so cheers, everybody. One to 11 paintbrushes. And yeah, this should be in the summer. This is definitely a summer drink and um, definitely a good drink in the summer. I'm going to give it a 10 because it's, it's something you would drink in the summer when it's really hot outside. So cheers, everybody. Cheers. Or when you're on vacation on the islands, this is a great drink. <laughs> cheers. 10 paint, 10 paintbrush. <laughs> All right, so let's get going. And um, we got a lot to do. So first off, my website, for anybody who's new, um, everything's on my website for where I'm going to be and what I'm doing. My workshop, I got coming up on Sunday. I'm our, I'm, I got to be there in Canuga down here. You'll see I'm going to Canuga Water Media Workshops, which is in Montreat, um, North Carolina. That's gonna be fun. I think there's still, if you're in that area and you still want to take it, I think there's a couple more spots available. Not many. Um, I know I have a lot, um, but there may be two available, two seats. But um, let me get rid of this thing on the bottom here. And so um, that's where I'm gonna be. And that's a couple more reason I'm not gonna have a paint along next week, next Thursday, because that's the big day. Next Thursday is a big day for Canuga. Down here is where you contact me and um, sign up for my newsletter right there. All right, let's go to our supplies, which is Holbein watercolors, of course. And I just ordered a bunch and I put a bunch of new ones in my palette and I actually filled up 30 palettes of watercolor for the students in Canuga. And so I also filled up 30 also, um, we call it um, gouache palettes too. So that's about 60 palettes I filled with paint and boy, that was my, my fingers were squeezing a lot <laughs> and so um lynn we're gonna see you next week all right great to see you there it's a lot of fun if you're going there like i said i'm really looking forward to it value study okay let's go to our value study and this is not a this is not a great great value study or not a great composition because basically there's a lot of darks and lights all over but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that the background is all warm, like way behind all this dark, because she, the, the girl, is in like silhouetted with the trees in front. And the tree is kind of a weird tree. Yes, I must say it is kind of weird. But um, I think it can work um, if you leave all the darks. And then maybe on the side here, I'm going to show you the side right here. The, these, these lights over here. I'm going to keep them dark and make it, make it like a bullseye composition where mostly right here in the middle is where all the light are going to be. This won't be that quite as light. It will be warm and this will probably be cool or darker, definitely darker. And so that, that will come forward and all this will then be in the back. And then I'm going to show you how to do optical scatter, which is like um, where the, the sun burns a hole into the objects. And so I, we call that optical scatter. I learned that from Carl Bretzky. So if you ever take a workshop from him, he can teach you all about that optical scatter. And that's where I'm going to take this orange in here. And, um, and I'm going to use the orange color. I mean, you can use some other, any other color you want, but I'm going to use orange and yellows and make it the same as I just did. And so here's my tabletop. You'll see what I did. So there's what I did. And I'm like, I like it. You know, it, like I didn't keep this part really dark. Um, but I think it works. I think it, um, it's pretty much like a U-shaped dark, you know, or maybe, yeah, like a, a C maybe, a sideways C. Um, but I think it works. I think it's okay. And the colors are basically orange and blue. And it may look a little bright on my screen here, but um, it's a little bit darker than that. And I'm going to work on the optical scatter a little bit better. I didn't quite do it right here because if you see right here, 
Um, it should be warmer. The, these darks should be more red. Um, they're not red enough. And I just, I'm not sure why I didn't do those all in the red and orange field because when the sun is that bright, it just turns everything orange and red and yellow, basically. So that's what we're going to try to do there. And then right here, I want to, I want you to keep the, the light and when the first wash, and let's go into our first wash because I want to keep that first wash right here so that I can come back and do the negative painting of the hair, the, basically the outline. And so, actually, by the way, I did this on a board. This is on a board. This is on a crescent board. See, it was a crescent board. And so this was kind of fun. And then again, this is not as textured as the paper. So this could be interesting because this is a little bit more textured. The paper is a little bit more textured. Let's get going. And look at this. <laughs> I bought myself some new brushes for myself. <laughs> Mine were getting kind of worn out because I did a lot of painting. And so look at, they're all brand new. And I even have one of these... Um, what do you call those ring? I don't know what they call those really long brushes. <laughs> um, dragon tongue, I think some people call it. I'm not sure what they call it, striper. But I'm going to try to use that for some of the leaves and stuff. We'll just see. All right. So brand new brushes. So I should be doing a really good painting because these automatically paint the painting, right? Hey, Dave, Monica, Tina, Lynn, Dawn, Sue, Pamela. Thanks for coming by. I really, um, it's amazing how many people have been coming by to the, um, to the, to these, YouTube videos and I'm really thankful really grateful and I've got now I got a thousand subscribers to my newsletter and that's really nice I mean just I can't thank you enough it's just really rewarding knowing that that many people want to learn how to how to do watercolor and so right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet this area right here I'm gonna work this part I'm working a light but this is the most important part to get that optical scatter. So I'm going to work a little bit hard on that in the beginning here, just because I want to get that reflection kind of going here really well. And so that's going to take a little bit more time than anything else. And so I'm going to start with that, but I have to work with light and dark all at once. So I'm going to take a little bit of yellow. I could even put some masking fluid down, but I'm just going to make it white right where the sun is. I'm going to wet it right here and I'm going to go right away dark and I'm going to actually do this with my round brush, my, my new round brush. Look at the point on these things when they're brand new. My gosh, there's like one hair in the very tip of that. It's so sharp. I'm not used to that because I wear them down pretty fast. You know, I usually do a, a, do a set a year, but that's a lot of painting. I mean, I do a lot of painting and if I do acrylic with it, you know, a lot of times I don't wash it out well enough and and so now I'm putting orange. That first one was yellow, then orange. I'm going to take a, bright, um, a darker orange. And, you know, as I clean my palette here a little bit because these have to be bright colors and they got to be, you know, right away. And see, I'm doing wet into wet. And so they're softening themselves. I don't have to soften it. It just softens itself. And then I'm going to take, and I always dry my brush out like this and I kind of blend it into the, into that area. You notice how I'm not blending down here. I'm just doing it around the top because that has to be blended. This is all going to be light, but I have to get this first. And so I'm just going to go in there, take it thick, and then I'm going to go right to a really dark, dark. And so here's a red. I know this is kind of like almost detailed, but it's important enough that I need to make it, I need to work at it. And so that it looks right. I don't want to um, go fast on this. I really want that to look like it's optical scatter and that it's just all soft edges. And to get soft edges, you need to wet it, but I need to go right from the light to the dark. And then I'm going to take it and just smooth it out with my brush, take out pigment and just work the pigment, work the pigment into the water, do it softly. And once I get this done, then, I'm, then it's fine. Then I can just leave it alone. I'm going to go right to a really dark, dark too. I'm just going to take some um, red and some dark purple permanent violet. I'm going to put that in there right away too because I want this to be nice and soft and smooth. I'm not going to put those little flares of light. That's what a camera does and I don't think I need that part. I don't need to have it flared like that. That's that's kind of, I'm not, I'm gonna, I'm not going to say corny, but it's just, it doesn't look, that's because of the lens it does that. The lens reflects it like that and it gives us little sparkles or whatever. The the rays that are, are in there. I'm just going to give it a softness so that it looks soft, basically. And here I'm, I have to add a little bit more water. I'm just going to try to let it blend itself. Really, the, the trick is to let it blend itself. Is like, you don't do the blending, you let the water do the blending for you. 
and so that's I think gonna be okay it's not quite as vibrant a yellow or orange as I wanted but and another thing about the TV or the monitor a lot of times the monitor doesn't show it as bright as it actually is it's just the way you have your monitor set and so your monitor may not look like it's really bright or not really or maybe it's too bright it's all it depends on how your monitor is set but there's nice and dark i did get a nice and dark up here and so i'm gonna get a little bit darker and i'll come back and then put a little bit of the um i'll come back with a darker dark up there and that'll make it even darker and also put on the the bark of the tree all right and so that's pretty much done so now i can go and do the rest of the lights i need to just to get that done so that that's important to get that looking right and um get that out of the way get that down here i just want to get that out of the way i just want to get that so that that looks okay it's almost like doing the face first before you get done with your um, a lot of people like to do the face first when you're doing a portrait and then leave the background for later because just in case that thing doesn't work out and so let me get this a little bit darker here all right so now I'm back to my big brush and now let's get the background and I'm just gonna take bright colors and I'm gonna go through everything I'm gonna go through everything because everything is gonna be light and my lightest light is right here so all this is gonna be darker than that and so I'm gonna take all my brushes I'm on my big brush and just get in there and do some really bright colorful yellows and oranges and not worry about the darks this is again this is the light and like I said I did spend a little bit more time than I would like but I needed to get that done right and get that all in there and so I'm just putting a nice and orange orange reds dark oranges and then right here is a little bit of a mountain and that's going to be a hard edge I'm just going to keep that hard edge right there there's like a little bit of a hill back here and um, one thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about let me just get this done really quick and I want to talk to you about the drawing part of this because I think um, we had a little discussion in class today that a lot of times I assume that you realize when there's tangents or there's things happening in the picture that I changed I changed the drawing because it just to me I look at it and I go oh I have to change that because that's a tangent like where the shoulder hits the tree and the photo right here look at that how it touches right on the full shoulder well I wouldn't draw like that but I always forget to tell you guys to look for things like that I don't take them out as much as I um, a lot of times I used to take those things out but I want you to kind of visualize those things and look for them because like you know I'm not always gonna be there to tell you which one to paint or make it right with Photoshop so something like that see how I I took it and made it farther away so that it doesn't that doesn't line up right there and if this tree looks kind of weird and odd and looks thinner on the bottom and bigger on the top why well, I, I made it thicker down here so I just do that automatically because that's just something I do when I'm drawing I automatically take and go look for the bad parts of the painting or parts that look weird and I change them I just change it and I as a, as a teacher I should be telling you that which I didn't kind of realize until today when they said yeah you should probably tell us that so that and I always think about that I should be telling you but I always forget <laughs> so um, look at the picture and try to look for things because what did I else did I change I changed a bunch of things because I just don't want that to touch right there and they have this tree really straight next to her uh, I made it a little bit odd shaped and so that it's not so perfectly straight and not hitting right there at a tangent and um, I made this part the backpack comes right to the edge of the picture and that's too much of a tangent so I added a lot more skirt you know or, or pants or whatever she has on and so I did that over here I added a branch because that's really weird over there and it looks really thick and I don't know what that is over there so I added a branch instead of making this look kind of weird and I don't know what that is so definitely don't be afraid of doing things like that so here I'm gonna go in here and just make things light and this is just basically the light parts behind the trees so um, I'm just gonna go in here real quickly and this is not a board so it is folding up a little bit because I don't tape things down anymore I don't I want everything to be a specific size so I don't have to do that I'm gonna come down here wet this all got these brushes brand new brushes are so sharp you know look how shiny they are too and they're all clean <laughs> I'm not used to working with such new brushes 
every brush, you know, if you use it a lot, well, I mean, my brushes are really good brushes, the ones that I sell. They're really nice, but they do wear out like anything else. I mean, if you're using them a lot and you know how I sometimes go with them and squish them and you know, I'll do all kinds of things to them. So yes, they do get kind of worn out. And I can usually still use them, but you know, what the heck, you know, I gave myself a gift today and I said, I'm going to, I need some new brushes. And actually what I couldn't do is I couldn't find my brushes. So <laughs> that's probably the reason I did it. <laughs> Because I got, I have to bring like thirty brushes to the to the thing. So I think some of the brushes went in with that. So here down here, I'm making it darker right away. I'm making that darker. Why? Because I want this to look a little bit darker down here, so that they'll go right into the tree. And this is all gonna be like foliage or weeds or whatever. Let me just take a little purple. Make it a little bit darker. Not going to worry about her or the tree or anything. This is behind the tree. This is just behind the tree. Because if you start going around the edges and stuff, that's going to be too sharp. And um, I know some people like to paint that way. And that's okay. You know, if you really can't work this way, you don't want to paint through, that's fine. With some ink class today, they don't want to do that. And that's fine. Just make sure that you watch your edges so that they kind of are look the same every throughout the whole painting so if you get a little white and little mar white marks here and there that's okay that's kind of a style where people leave little white marks on everywhere so that's that's fine i like to paint through because then i'm i'm done with that area and go i can move on and go something else and um so now we're, let, i'm gonna go right into let's go right into the background warm colors of these leaves because the next step would step two would be the large mediums, right? And the only large medium that I have is, is still in the background, but over here where the, these leaves are, they're gonna be kind of red. This time I'm gonna make them more orangey red. And so these are the leaves that are really close to the sun here, or that are close to this area. And then this will be the this will be part of the tree, and it'll kind of bleed in there. And you notice I'm using bright red this time. Um, that way it will look like it's being burnt uh, with the with the sun right there. And also when you're doing this, um, these brushes, these sharp brushes, they have a sharp point. So it's easy to make a leaf if you start with the point that's pointy and then push down, just push down and look at how you can make the leaf. You know, you make it like this, just push down, make it sharp and go like this. And I'm making these kind of, I'll make some of these even yellow, you know, cause I want them to be really bright right here. And I know this seems like it's a, it's too detailed for what I'm doing right now, but it is my medium. And it's the only thing that I have a medium. So I'm going to put that in there. Also, oh, another thing I, I noticed that in the picture, there's like three leaves way over her head. And um, that's too many. It looks like, like there's too many leaves in here. So I just put one or two little leaves on top of there. I really um, want to make sure that, and I actually went over this. I'm gonna take some of this out here. I wanna make sure that this is really bright right here. So I'm gonna pull this out while it's still wet. I'm gonna pull a little bit of light out of here and see how I can just pull it out with water because it's still a little damp. And so I'm just gonna pull out that part because that's gonna be the reflected light. I mean, the um, rim lighting on her. So I'm just gonna pull that out real quick and this will be darker later. Now I get this leaf, which is gonna be kind of like more of a, a warm leaf. And I see I only put a little bit into the top of her head. I didn't do like the picture was because the picture, again, it looked like her hair was made of leaves, <laughs> basically. And so what I want to do there is I want to take them away. Uh, if they don't look good on the paper or on the picture, then don't do it. Don't draw it onto your paper. Just because it's like that in the photo doesn't mean you have to paint it like that or draw it like that. That's, that's what I was trying to tell you about. When you see something you don't want to put in there, don't put it in. Change it. It's okay. Matter of fact, you should change it so that it looks better than what the photograph is. Photographs a lot of times don't have everything in it that it should have in there. There should be some different things in there. All right, and so now um, the big area will be your hair. So let's go in her hair, and the medium is her is her body basically. Like her sweatshirt right here is a, is probably the second biggest medium thing. So to my big brush, and I will make it like a pink. I'll kind of come in here with pink. And purple, maybe a little pink and purple, making it a little bit dark because it is still in shadow. So I'll just go in here and just kind of shadow that up. It's a nice purpley pink, purple and pink. And 
and it is dark, you know, but it's not as dark as the trees. The trees are almost black, but you can also lighten it up a little bit. And I'm not going to go over the backpack because the backpack, I'm going to come in later and um, make that blue. And here I'm just going to put a little bit of purple and pink. I just put, once it's wet, I can just plop stuff in there, right? Colors in there and I like that part a little lighter. This part over here, let's make a little bit of pink over here. This, this shoulder, I'm going to make a little bit more orange because why? Because again, this is pointing towards the sun. And so everything in this area could be a little bit warmer when it comes to the, the um, sun being really bright right there. I just don't think I made it look bright enough um, on my other painting. So this one, I wanted to be a little bit more careful with trying to make it really bright around this area. Orange right there. Backpack. Here's her sweater, and I know this. Is a, I could just go into the tree because the trees can be darker, but I, I just go to the line. That's fine. You know, not, not every time you have to make it right to that point. I didn't even look at any guys. Any questions? Man, I'm just painting away here. Hi everyone. I've been here for ten minutes, but could not connect to comments. Oh. Let's see. Any questions? No questions? Nope. All right, so there's our mediums. Let's just get that in there. And let's put her hair in. And her hair is gonna be, of course, orange because it's, it's, everything else is orange. So I might as well make her a redhead too. So I'm just gonna kind of go in here. And I'm just gonna make these like little hairs coming out there. And then I'm gonna go around these couple of leaves right here. And I'm just gonna go straight down. I'm gonna like, mess it so there's like little hairs basically and then in the middle i'm just gonna definitely make it darker so i'm gonna make purple and orange that makes kind of a brown so it'll kind of look you know nice in this area and then i'll give her uh, i'll do the brush strokes like hair right you know, i don't i don't go back and forth i go like where the hair is flowing flowing And later on, you can, when it's dry, you can even put more little thin hairs in there too. But right now, this is this big areas, and that is definitely not dark enough. Even though the, per, the on the side is light, but you need to make it nice and dark, so that the darker you make this area, the lighter the sun will look. Because she's basically in she's in um, silhouette. She's a silhouette behind the sun, in front of the sun, not behind the sun. A little bit thicker. A little bit thicker so I can make some hairs. See, I'm taking pure pigment. Going to rub it on here. Get rid of the water. Take pure pigment and give me some hairs. See, if you use thick pigment with no water and a wet wash, you can still make it look like little lines. Let's put a little bit more red in there on the sides. Okay, so let me take another drink. This is really good. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Wow, that's really good. <laughs> I should almost be 11 because, but I have to be on a beach to, to be 11. <laughs> it's definitely a beach drink. You want to be on the beach when you're getting that. All right, so let's go down here. I'm going to let's do the, let's do the backpack right now. What the heck? It's also a dark. No, let me think. What else is medium? What else is medium? There's nothing really else that's medium. So let's just go down and do our darks. Let's just do our darks. And darks being exactly what they are, the darks. And so I'm going to take ultramarine blue for the backpack. And um, ultramarine blue and a little bit of purple. And I'm just going to come in here. And, um, oh, that's all wet. So it's going to have soft edges. Oh, boy. Oh, well, how about some peacock blue? Maybe I'll have some peacock blue. And let's see how soft that is going to be. I shouldn't have done it while it was soft. I just, while it was wet. Too late. I'm just going to come down and put the, put the edge on there. Taking pure pigment. It's kind of damp still on the paper. It's a little damp, so I'm not going to get a super hard edge. Over here, it's dry, it looks like. Ultramarine, Peacock. And up here, 
I'm gonna wipe out a little bit of this so it's a little bit brighter up there. See, I'm gonna make that a little bit brighter. And I will also make that a little bit more red. So red and blue make what? Purple, right? So if I put a little bit of red up there. And it's not gonna be as bright or blue only because I've used orange underneath that. And orange and blue are complements, so they're gonna they're gonna gray each other up a little bit. But that's okay, because I don't need it super, super bright anyways. I don't want it super bright. It's just a backpack. And this side would be a little bit darker, right? Oh, too much water in my brush. A little bit less. I'm going to do a little purple in the, in the blue. Purple and blue. This makes it red. So that's fine. A little bit darker over here. A little dark purple in the blue. Peacock blue has a little bit of um, brightness to it. Kind of a green to it, and the dots. You know, I just polka dots on the on the back on the backpack. So I'll do that later after it's dry. I'm gonna put a little handle here that they usually have little handles right there. I'll put that in real quick. All right. Quite often after I get my first wash down, I lose my drawing lines. How do you keep your drawing visible? Um, yeah, it all depends on what you're painting. If you're painting the lights first, you shouldn't do, you're, you're getting too dark with your lights. But if you, um, they're probably not dark enough. I always, most of my students don't make their lines dark enough and because they, they feel they're going to be too dark, but you can erase them. You know, you can erase them. The ones that you do have left over, you can kind of erase them because they're going to be in a light area. But the dark ones, um, they're going to be covered with dark, so you don't have to worry about them. So just darken up your lines a little bit more. All right, let's go down here and just go um, into her. Let's do purple pants. Purple and orange, which make a brown. So it's just dark. It doesn't have to be a specific color. And I'm just going to go down here. There's a dark for her pants. And I'm going to take a little black in there too. Make it really dark. And I, I kind of want to not have this all um, hard edged. So I'm just going to go in there and later on, maybe when it dries, I'll go in there and make it a little bit soft edged so that not everything here is hard edged. And I'm going to take this color right into the tree. I'm not going to show the side of her, of her hip here. I'm just going to bleed that right into the tree. Why? Because I don't want, I don't need to see all the hard edged lines. I like soft edged lines in things because then um, it doesn't bring your eye down there. And I actually, I'm going to do that over here too, right into the, into the, ground there so that it's not like I want to look in this corner right now that's too hard an edge but I will come back when I do that part but now I'm just doing the tree and again painting her arm and I'm just going to go in here and wet it as I go along I'm using purple and um, orange permanent violet and brilliant orange that makes a brown basically and I'm just going to go around some of these leaves negative paint some of the leaves in there and that's what I first start out with, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stick with that, just those two colors. I'll put everything in there. I'll put red. I will put blue. I'll put everything in there. But to start out with, I just wet it. Give a hard eye edge. That's fine. But see how my pencil line is gone now? Because I'm using a dark and my pencil line is no longer available. It doesn't need to be. Because I, now I, I figured it out and I can go in and just get some of the bark looking like bark. And now um, over here, I'm going to put more red. I'm going to take a little red, dump that in. Because now it's wet. And now that it's wet, I can float other colors in there. I'll float a little bit of blue next to the backpack here. Just because because it's just, it fits. Like it's reflected light. So a little bit of blue in there. A little bit of red. How about some orange? How about some orange right here? Just a, a little bit lighter, but that's okay. I'll go back to my permanent violet, cronacridum, and that cronacridum, permanent violet and um, brilliant orange, make a really nice dark, dark brown. I don't have brown on my palette, so I have to make it. So, and this purple, and maybe a little bit of black over here. I want this to be really dark over here, so a little bit of black darkens it. And then some of these leaves, and some of the leaves over here, I'm going to do. I forgot to put some of these leaves first really um, yellow and orange so that they're outlined with that like the rimlet with this color 
So I'm going to put that in there first, and then I, on top of that, I will put the dark. So it looks like it's rimlet, like the leaf is actually the rimlet. And rim lighting is just what it says. It's it's around the objects. It's rim. Like I will put that in later, too, with opaques, maybe. I'll go in there and put that in there. Wow, time's flying. i got to hurry up here. <laughs> it's already 7 o'clock. I've already been talking half an hour. Any questions? Quite possible. Are there any other questions, guys? Come on, ask questions. I'll look up every once in a while. And also, with the, with the leaves, don't make them all leaves. Um, you know, make some branches, make some of the leaves all come together like a big wash. Because if you make everything leaves, then it's like too complicated. It's like too, te too much texture for this area. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll leave some of it just being blurry. Again, blurry is good. Blurry makes it look like, um, and here, I'm going to put little shadows from these leaves across this. And then put little shadows. And you notice I'm not using green, um, though I could. Let's, let's put a little green in there because the green and purple can actually work. I'm going to put a little green and purple. So I'll make my green with Cranicum gold and a little bit of blue and then I add a little purple to that. And that's actually a good color for dark, um, a greenish dark purple. It's actually, I like that to be a great green. It's, it looks realistic. And that's the thing about greens. Um, you want to make them look realistic like they actually are in real life. Because greens are not super vibrant like some of the tube greens. They just don't look right. This doesn't look like that would ever be a color out in nature. You see, I'm just putting that together kind of in a, in a fashion where it's just really, very um, together. And then in some spots you can see through the leaves. Maybe there's a couple of branches going through here. I'm going to put leaves, branches. I'm not sure if you can see what I was doing there. And I'm going to take this part and do this dark. And as I go down here, I'm going to start getting to the red again. That's what i got to make sure I get back to the red because right in this area that's where the sun is going to start hitting right there and so that's going to be a little bit darker i got to make that a little bit darker and warm and now this way goes the branch the trunk of the tree and um and i'm just you know look at your picture because some of this is, looks pretty neat and so just copy your picture when it comes to some things All right, you can catch a repost. Thanks. Thanks for watching so far. <laughs> you can always catch it later. I'm just very happy that a lot of times you guys even watch. It's, I'm just so proud of that. I'm so happy. You can watch it now, later, whenever you want. It's just nice to know that people are watching and that you guys want to learn. We were talking again today about how it, how much time it takes you to become really good at what you're doing. And I, myself included, I, I find that I've been looking through a lot of my work lately. And um, boy, I really don't like a lot of my stuff. So I think in the next couple of weeks when I get back from Canuga, I'm going to be talking a little bit about taking some of our old paintings and looking at them again and seeing what we can do. Like year old paintings, two year old paintings, three year old paintings. And go and look through them and see what, how well you've developed and what you're doing now and then we can make them better maybe we'll do another uh, you know take old paintings and make them better and go back into them and try them because i've noticed that too when i'm doing two painting or this painting twice it really helped me a lot in becoming better and better and i've been noticing that my even my demonstration will be getting a little bit better than when i first started doing these um because i looked through all the paintings and i was like wow some of those were not that great <laughs> when i first started out these these paint alongs and um, I think I feel they're getting a little bit better, a little bit better, but that's because I'm doing a lot more. So even myself included as a teacher, you get better the more you do. The more you practice, the more you do, you're just going to get better. And it doesn't matter how many you screw up because that only helps you. The screwing up and making bad ones is, is makes, makes the next one even better. You know, so just keep on going. Don't get discouraged. 
Just keep on going. It's going to work. So then I'm going here and getting this bright. See, now I got the really dark ups, uh, darks up here. And so I'll make that really dark. And I get some more of this green. I get some more of that green again. Some Prussian blue, cracking them gold. I'll put that over here, away from the sun. I put a branch over here instead of what it was. And so it's going to be a little bit different from what the photograph is. Again, make it to what you want to make it look good. Uh, I'm going to change things if I don't like the look of things. Here, this should be a little bit more orange. And you can also make this look more um, like texture because there is a trunk or there is, um, what do you call it, a um, bark on this, so on this tree. So put bark on the tree. Which I didn't do in the first one, and I could do, do more of that here too. A little bit more bark in there, make it a little bit more textured. I think I'm getting this. The lighting is a little bit better on this one, I think, because I used more of the orange right close to here, so that's good. And then it gets dark right away. I mean, it gets dark really fast, and so you can do that with like little lines, and then go right into your purple again, purple and orange. I will also put some leaves up here, you know, just to make it look more like there are leaves in front there, too. I should do some in orange and red, though. Again, some leaves over here that are red, not 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 the dark, because, they're, they're, again, this is behind the tree, so this would be more, be more sunny. And I'm still going to do the background a little bit darker, but first I want to get this in there to get that lighting effect first. looks really bright today my light are, I'm not sure my lights are not that bright either okay coming down here hey Maria a lot about this um, image and like um, a couple of us said that we could probably have left this tree out of here um, that would have been fine. Like she's looking to fast. Oh my god, it just dropped right in the middle of my picture. <laughs> it dropped. Now there's a bird right there. <laughs> right where I want my whitest white. I drop a little paint on there. <laughs> there we go. That's fine. And this right here too. I dropped that right there. But this picture, we could have left this out of here. I mean, it still would have been a, probably even a better composition, but I kind of liked it there. And so you, you can do that too if you want. If you feel like they want to change the composition, go right ahead. Try it and see. Maybe it's a better not to have that tree there. I kind of like the look of her looking between these two trees or whatever. And that's like, I, mean, I kind of liked it. But again, it could have been done another way too. Now I'm just again using permanent violet, brilliant orange, a little bit of black. I'm going to go in here and just, once it's wet, the thicker I get, the more I can make it look like there's, there's bark on the tree. I'm getting hard edges too, and I will kind of go into these hard edges later because I'm going to do the background behind there and make it kind of, I'm going to do some spattering. Actually, this part of the tree is a little bit darker, so now I'm going to show a little bit of her of her side her hip but then i'll just let it bleed in there's a little shadow across here across the tree maybe her head shadows it a little bit right here and actually she's probably a little bit too bright here i might have to darken her anyways a little bit but let's get this tree done first what time is it i guess we got plenty of time I get a lot of people telling me that <laughs> that they um, are both they both um, people are watching my videos and and um, eating dinner. So that's cool. You know, I that's fine with me. <laughs> do whatever you have to do. I don't mind you eating dinner. I'm just thankful that you guys watch. I really am. Okay, let's now go in. Let's go. What should we do next? Let's go and do our background here. I'm going to do the weeds behind uh, because this is way too bright. 
And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a little bit of green, that dark green I just made before, and a little purple in there. I'm going to go down here and make it kind of like foliage and not foliage, but um, weeds and, and shrubbery. I'm just going to shrubbery down here. And as I go up, make it a little bit more orange. And um, I'm going to spatter. I'm going to make it look like, you know, and when there's weeds and there's a lot of like field, there's a lot of things happening in there. And look at how light that light is sitting there. Don't like that. I gotta figure that out. See how I put my light there and you don't see the, the reflecting of the light. I gotta get a professional studio guy in here and <laughs> do my studio correctly. So I'm gonna spatter here now and just gonna put some bright, bright colors in there. Let's cover up a little bit of her. Get a little bit of texture in there. Do the same thing over here. I'm going to give her a little rim lighting here. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go all the way to the edge. Make it darker, but not go all the way to the edge of her because that will be rim lighting. So I'm just going to put a little dark down here. <clears throat> Boy, this really bugs me, this over here. <laughs> I'm going to put this lamp thing just so you can see there. <laughs> I don't like when I... My studio doesn't look up to par. For some reason, I must have moved my light or something because it's never did that before. Okay, so a little bit of, and then we're gonna go up here and make this nice and warm. And then I'll make this, this part over here because there's a little bit of an edge from here from, the, from this little hill or mountain here. I'm gonna make this a little bit darker. And then I'm gonna negative paint the hair on the side here. Make this darker so that she really pops out that her her hair the rim lighting of her hair really pops out and this is the background this is just in the back the hill it gets a little bit darker as it goes down it's going to be a little bit more weed weeds like i can even do that to the tree i can make a little bit on the edge of the tree Same thing on this side. Taking a little bit of brilliant orange. Boy, I love that color, brilliant orange. Just a wonderful color. My second favorite coming to first one, of course, being violet. So this is a little bit darker over here. A little bit too harsh, I think, maybe. A little bit, too, ah, that's okay. We'll just put it over here too. Same kind of rim lighting, the edges. Here and there. All right, I gotta move this light. This is giving me. <laughs> Let's see, does that work better? <laughs> nope, it's still there. I'm gonna have to move it later. Yeah, put that little thing right there. Put that light there. <laughs> I put my arm right there. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go in here. It's just a little bit darker. Let's do the same on this side. Mess this up a little bit over here. Oh, thanks, Tina. That's a good idea. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, if you ever want to look at old videos, I mean, they're still up there. There's over close to 500 videos out there now, and. Um, I, I mark them as I, you know, as what they are. And so if you're like doing negative painting or something, or if you're doing a certain kind of element, I usually um, name it to what it is. And so it's pretty easy to find if you just know what you're looking for, like um, wet in the wet or wet on dry or, you know, whatever kind of <laughs> problems you're having. And if you can't find it, ask me about it. Um, email me and I will find it for you and I'll, I'll, I'll send you the link. What the heck? All right. Took care of that. <laughs> that bugs the heck out of me when something like that happens. All right. And so let's do this area here a little bit darker. 
then right over here. And then we're gonna have to detail her up because she's very, um, she's not quite dark enough for what, it, what happened, what I did this time. So we're gonna make it a little bit darker. First, let's just get our background um, done. We'll go right over to the edge. And then again, spattering a little bit. I will cover her up so I don't get too much spatter on her. Because spatter looks like, you know, a mess and it can look more like weeds and stuff. So, I mean, that doesn't look great to have just a bunch of lines and shrubbery. And you can even put like really bright flowers in it. You can do like that, so yellow. Just look like maybe so gonna, and there's like little flowering weeds in there. I'll do it on this side too. Do little dots in here. All right, now let's get her done. And so she needs to be darker and more detailed, like because she shouldn't be soft. She's like your center of interest, so she needs to be the main center of interest. So you're gonna make her hard edged, contrasty, the most contrast. So first I'm going to get the, um, the backpack dark again, really get it sharp. I'm going to put some purple in here, sharpen it up again, do the side. And her hair didn't get dark enough, so now I can go back in. And there's no problem with doing that. I mean, it was my first wash and I just didn't get dark enough. That's okay. Now I'm getting some hard edge stuff and I can make it darker, go around these couple of little leaves that are on top of her head here. Do little real thin hairs. Let me use my rigger brush. Use my little rigger brush and get some of the hairs in there really very fine. Because it's about her. I mean, she's she's the main center of interest here. So I'm going to put that really fine. And I'm doing it over orange so I can use purple to make it look brown. Maybe a little bit of red to give her, make her a redhead, of course. And then we're going to just put a little bit dark in there now. It's the top of her um, collar here. And I noticed that we are getting a little bit more complicated with the subject matter. But, you know, it's really like we're not doing the face and we're not doing that. So it still shouldn't be too hard for you. I mean, still try it. Give it a shot. Now the leaves right above here, too, should be a little bit darker. Right here. And so I'm going to make those a little bit darker. And the nice warm ones are underneath, and so that's kind of neat now. I can just go in there. This center, that's the center of interest right there, so I'm okay with putting the, the darks right here. Let some of them bleed together. Oh, the bunny ears. <laughs> They do look like bunny ears. Okay, we're gonna have to get rid of one of those. <laughs> they are bunny ears, look at that. So we'll make one, and the other one we're gonna get rid of. We'll make one bunny ear, or one leaf. <laughs> yeah, that looks kind of weird. Thanks for noticing that. <laughs> I may even notice that later, but I, I didn't notice it until now. Good, good, good catch. Maybe it's for Easter. It's an Easter picture. <laughs> there we go. Just one leaf now. <laughs> so let's put a couple leaves on this side. And now her whole her whole sweatshirt should be a little bit darker because it's that. I mean, it doesn't look like the sides are dark or lighter or darker, so. I'm going to take a little bit of purple, lavender, some pink, and make it a little bit darker this time. And like go in here. It could be a different color, but I wanted to have the edge a little bit darker so that you catch that light. It really is about the light, and the lighting should be darker there. Because she's basically silhouetted. She's in a silhouette shape. And so we can give her a collar, but then also just... Make it a little bit lighter on this side, a little, a little bit lighter on the edge. And now I'm getting a lot of purple so that it kind of matches the rest of the painting too. 
And that's a good thing. You want that to happen. You want it to look like the rest of the painting. And look at this part is a part of her thing too. And that's not even close to the same color. So let's make that a little bit more colorful down here, like the top part. So purple and lavender, like I said. And I don't mind it being really messy down here because I, again, I want this all to kind of bleed together down here. I want your eye to kind of focus in on this one spot right there. And then her backpack, where's my other painting? Yeah, see the backpack should be a lot darker, especially on this side. So I'm gonna make the backpack a little bit darker because that's what the contrast tells me in my value study that the backpack should be darker. So let's make that darker. And then it really stands out and as part of the center of interest. It can still be vibrant too and dark. I'm using Prussian blue. I'm using Prussian blue just right over this. And that's a dark blue, so it's going to be nice and dark and rich. It's going to be a rich blue. I can keep parts of it a little bit lighter, but then I'm going to put polka dots on there anyways. I'm still going to put polka dots because I think that's a really kind of important <laughs> on this. And this has to be darker up there too. How much time do I have? Oh, we got plenty of time. Purple and green. Remember, purple and green are great to put... Put purple in your green makes it really dark. Makes it really nice dark. So I'm just gonna try to get some of this really dark over here. Darker through here. Put back in the Prussian blue. Hit the side really dark. See, it's almost too much stuff up here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna blur some of this out. It's almost too much um, texture, so I'm just gonna blur some of this out, so it's not so textury that you see so much texture in that area, because texture will make you look in that area, because it means that it's a bunch of detail, and so I'm just gonna blend it together so that you're not looking so much in one area. Even though there's a lot of dots like that all around in the painting, but I, by not having it all dots of detail of the of the leaves makes it look a little bit more times here because I want you to look here. That's where I want you to look, and so that your eye stays down here at your center of interest. And I notice that the trees really should be darker. So I'm going to put a little coat of purple. Because if it's too close to the background, then it's not going to, it's not going to come forward. So just darkening a little bit more. And at the same time, getting some texture from the bark. Same thing over here. If I just make this a little bit darker, I'm using black and Prussian blue and a little bit of red. It's going to come in here, maybe some Prussian blue too. A little bit darker. Get a red in here. It's getting pretty thick here. I gotta make, make sure it's not too thick. I don't want it to be gouache. I, I still want it to be transparent watercolor, so I don't want to get too thick. But if I'm floating my pigment, that's okay. It'll be fine. I'm just gonna float the pigment down here. And then the, then the leaves down here. Am I getting close? You have five minutes. Down here, gonna make this a little bit darker, a little bit more foliage. It looks like all my spattering went away. T 
tapping to get my spatter. And finally will be my dots, my polka dot backpack. And I think I'll have enough time to put them on there while it's still drying, but I think it's okay. Still got five minutes, so we're good. All right, so we got the light coming there. That's cool. And so now we're going to go into opaques. We're going to go on opaques. And um, you could have put masking fluid down there. And you can also take white and put around every or put masking fluid around things. But I'd rather just take the, um, I'm going to take like a, a darker blue, or like a lighter blue, I mean. I'll take like a Prussian blue, not a Prussian blue, but a, a horizon blue or a turquoise blue. And I'm going to make these little dots. A uh, little words. I don't have to make them all either. I, don't, I can just make some of them. It's still a little wet, but that's okay. Then it'll be soft edged. It'll be soft edged dots. And that's fine with me. Just kind of putting them in all around, you know, kind of in a pattern. I'm using it pretty thick, so you don't have to worry about it running too far, even if it is wet. And maybe you don't like polka dot um, backpacks, so don't do it. You know, you don't have to have a polka dot backpack either <laughs> if you don't want one. This is really wet right here, so this is going to probably go away, but that's okay. I'll go back in after it's dry. Now I'm going to take a little bit of white. And watch this. I'm just going to take a little bit of white and yellow, maybe. Just take nice and rich. A little bit of water. And I'm going to hit spots that I feel that it needs a little hit. Just to brighten up a little, couple of spots. Like maybe over here we can brighten up the, the branch a little bit. In these parts you can maybe do a little bit of light that is hitting a leaf. Maybe a leaf is all totally light. You know, don't be afraid of putting um, opaques in there. It's okay. Nobody's going to come over and arrest you. It's just, a, it's a neat look sometimes to put, it's almost like this is what oil painters do. At the end, they put white, make it thick to use it. So I'm just using gouache. Um, I'm using watercolor, but like a gouache. And just putting it in little highlights in places, little dots. Where I feel I want it. Maybe on the edge here a little bit. A couple light leaves. How about that? A couple little light leaves hitting on the edges. Leaves in their hair. Okay. Oh well, I think that is going to be about it. Let's put a little bit more yellowish um, color right in here because it seems like this guy kind of dark. So I'm going to put a little yellow in this area. Like it's really bright right there. And so I'm just going to smudge that into the area a little bit. Now I couldn't enter this into certain um, societies because this is now opaque. There's some opaques in here. But I kind of like that look. I really do like that look of um, gouache in, in some, of the, some of the paintings. This line was not good. That the bunny ear line, that's not a good line. That I shouldn't have put that in there. But let's make that a bunny ear again. <laughs> that look kind of weird. And then also, the very last thing will be some flowers in the field here. Little dots of flowers, little, little orange flowers. A little bit orange and one minute left. Smear it in there a little bit. Get a little bit of, man, eh, that's still too weird. <laughs> Not so many, just a few here and there. All right, guys, I think that's it. I can't see anything else. Is this bright right there? Okay, that's it. Get that out of the way. And so 
both pretty good not too bad this one's a little bit more purple this one's a little bit more yellow pretty close to the same this one i could have probably be getting a little bit excuse me a little bit darker um, but both pretty in interesting and different so we'll see there you go all right so next week there will not be a paint along unfortunately because i will be down in canuga and so don't look around Thursday, but maybe Sunday this Sunday, um, I'm going to be down in North Carolina in the morning. I may do a YouTube. It'll just depend on what I'm doing that morning. If I get up early enough and if I'm, if they have connection, I may do an outside depending on what the weather is like. It's supposed to rain though, I hear, but, um, just check it out. Maybe when I do it on YouTube anyways, it tells you if I'm going to there or you just watch it afterwards, like any other time. All right. Any last questions? I'll uh, see anybody who's giving me a Canuga next week and and I'll see you the following week to do the paint along in two weeks. All right. So have fun with this one. Post it on my um, Facebook page, group page, and then we'd love to see what you're doing. All right. So until a couple weeks, see you later. Bye-bye.